Hello there, I'm Jimmy of Vegas, this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 40. In this tutorial we're going to create a script which will allow us to get into our car and drive as normal. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So before we go any further, I will um, kind of point out that um, it isn't entirely possible to easily create the animation to open a car door and get in the vehicle. So the idea of doing that is not complicated, but trying to find the right kind of models to allow that is um, either very time consuming or very expensive. So I am always on the lookout for vehicles which do have all parts um, movable. In the case of this car that we have, and most cars that you will find for free, the doors don't move. So they would have to be a separate part for you to open. For something like an opening door animation of the character opening the door, you could probably get something like that from somewhere like Mixamo. So that's not so much the problem, it's the vehicle that is the problem. So for all intents and purposes, we are just going to be able to get into the car and drive it. There won't be any animation to open the car door and get in, at least not yet. If I ever do find acceptable models, somewhat like for example on the asset store, I'll be sure to update you guys and show you how to do it. But as it stands right now, it isn't 100% possible. Um, obviously, unless you're prepared to pay the money to get those expensive models, then you can do it quite easily. So for now, all we're going to do is allow our player to come up to the car and get in and drive. So to do that, we are going to do a couple of things. We're going to have a trigger area, which is going to be, let's say, here and here, which means that when our player is inside it, we are going to be able to get into the car. And that's actually really, really easy to do. A lot of people imagine that kind of thing to be difficult, but it really isn't. The first thing we need to do is set up the trigger area of where we can get into the car. So on the car itself, right click, 3D object, cube, because cubes are always great, and scale it so as it surrounds the car but not too much, because we don't want to be able to get into the car if we're stood at the front, for example, or at the back, kind of at least near the doors. So let's increase this, um, let's say 6 there, uh, maybe 2.5 there, let's bring it up so we can see roughly where it's going to be and turn off mesh renderer and tick is trigger. Next thing we need to do is we need to set ourselves a new camera to view the car, i.e. from up above. And we can use the same kind of principle that we used when we created Tony's camera. We can duplicate one, bring it over and use that. So let's duplicate that Tony missions cam and let's bring it into the car. And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to rename this cube as vehicle entry trigger and we'll name this as vehicle cam so let's turn that vehicle cam on and let's get it into position so i'm going to zero out the position and the rotation bring it up backwards uh, angle it down so we can see the car a little better probably about there should do. And again, it's entirely up to you how you want to um, make this, you know, it's your camera angle at the end of the day. This is a basic camera view of the car, but what we will end up doing is making it a little bit more advanced. For now, we just want to get the basics down and the mechanics working. And if you've seen anything of my driving and racing series, we're going to aim for something a little bit like that with the camera eventually, but try and advance it a little bit more to make it more reliable. So, where do we go from here? Well, let's turn that vehicle cam off. And how do we make it so we can get into the car? Well, we're going to use a, that object as a trigger, but we're going to do it in a clever kind of way because we can only get into the car when we press the E key. So, let's create a new folder in our scripts folder and call this vehicles. And in here, let's create a new C sharp script called vehicle entry and in here we need to add in 
a namespace at the top because we're using the Unity standard assets for the car controller, so we need to reference that here. So using Unity engine, not Unity engine, Unity standard asset, sorry. Standard assets dot vehicles dot car semicolon. Uh, we need to get rid of void start and the annotations. We don't need them. So the way this is going to work is the vehicle needs to basically be turned off until we get into it. So to do that, we need to make sure that on the car itself, we have the car controller turned off. We have the car user control turned off. We have the car audio turned off. And while I'm on that topic, let me quickly check our contract killer and turn the character control back on because we turned it off last tutorial so we could see the car driving past. So on the car, we have those three turned off and obviously we need to turn them on when we're inside the car. So in here, we need to now create a couple of variables. So the first one is gonna be the camera. So public game object, vehicle cam next one is going to be the player because we'll need to turn the vehicle camera on and the player off because the vehicle would theoretically become the player so public game object the player semicolon and next is going to be the vehicle itself because we need to reference that to turn the specific scripts on so public game object and the vehicle will be live. It'll, it'll be known as a live vehicle because we are the ones in control of it. So live vehicle, semicolon. And essentially, we might be able to go with that. So I'm just thinking about how we're going to piece this together. We might, in fact, we'll have a bool to say that we can enter and you'll see why we're gonna add that bool as well. Because it'll make sense when we create all of this. So public bool can enter so by default that should be false i think because then it'll be a bit silly if it isn't so we're going to have void on trigger enter doesn't need to be private but we do need to have this variable here in the parentheses you can call it anything you want i'm going to keep it as its standard other but whatever you call it just remember to name it as such in this next bit so we need to say if other dot tag equals and in quotes player because remember we have called it player then we need to say that can enter equals true and we need to do the inverse of that so void on trigger exit and again it doesn't need to be private and we don't need any if statements in here but we do need to say that can enter is false so basically what we're saying is if we're in this particular section and we are known as the player then the can enter would become true if we are not then it is false so what we can do now is we can monitor whether we're going to press anything to enter the vehicle so in order to do so we can say if and in brackets can enter equals true then do the following and we're going to nest another if statement to say if we are pressing a key and that key we can have as anything we want but for convenience i'm just going to use the e key so if input dot get key down and in brackets key code dot e and again that can be absolutely anything at all um, it can be L, K, space, whatever. So if we press the E key, what do we want to do? First things first, we want to turn the vehicle camera on. So vehicle cam dot set active, true, semicolon. Then we need to turn the player off because like I say, the vehicle theoretically becomes the player. So the player dot set active, false semicolon now we need to turn the controls for the vehicle on so live vehicle dot get component in spiky brackets car controller oh close bracket dot enabled equals true 
then the same needs to be done for the other two. So live vehicle dot get component and in spiky brackets, I think it's called yes, car user control. So car user control opos bracket dot enabled equals true semicolon. And finally, live vehicle dot get component and then spiky brackets, it's car audio. Yes, that's right. Car audio, opos bracket dot enabled equals true. Now, at the same time, when we've pressed the E key, I think the very first thing we're going to need to do is turn off the collider for that vehicle entry trigger. So let's say this dot game object dot get component spiky brackets box collider oh close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and save so the way this is all working is it's basically saying that if we are in the trigger area and we are called the player then we can enter the car so up here if we can enter the car and then we press the e key then we get into the car turning off the player and turning on the car. So let's head back into Unity and we need to attach that vehicle entry script onto the vehicle entry trigger right there and then vehicle camp is that one the player which is I've lost him there he is and can enter is the ball oh, so live vehicle becomes the car itself and save and now let's press play and let's see if this works theoretically it should do so i'm thinking as long as I've done that right, because essentially we are saying in the update we're always checking if we're pressing the E key. And if I press that now, nothing happens. But as long as we are inside this trigger area, we can get inside the car. And off we go. Hey, hey. So everything seems to be okay. And we've driven off the edge of the map. So yeah, I'm happy that that's working as intended. Like I say, it's, it's basic in, in terms of uh, we just get into the car and drive, but at least we're in that mindset now of we've gotten into that car and we're driving it. So I think next tutorial, um, what we'll focus on is getting out of the car and spawning the player next to the car. Because if we think about it, when we have attached uh, the cam or turned off the player and attached the car as the main player, then our player will just stay here. He won't move. So we'll work out a way of transferring that to the end location of where the car stops. So that's all coming up in the next tutorial. And another couple of bugs that have arisen from that, don't worry, we'll sort them out as well. Probably next tutorial, maybe the one after, but either way, it's going to be a lot of fun from here on in. I'll see you in the next tutorial, guys.